That's right. Um, just uh, asking for an update on Jacoby uh, Meyer and Max. I know they missed practice yesterday. Uh, yeah, yeah, they both went Wednesday. Let them go ahead and get a little more rest on Thursday, and then I'll practice today. Optimistic for Sunday then on Jacoby? Yes, sir. What about uh, Harrison Bryant? We know he's been, uh, he's been He'll practice today. We'll see how he feels out today. The last few weeks with uh, Jacoby out, what do you see from other receivers as far as stepping up? Actually, is it kind of a steep learning curve for those guys? Uh, a lot more reps. I mean, look at last week, uh, DJ Turner, 75 reps, Alex Bachman over in the 30s, Christian in the 30s. I mean, those guys, a lot more reps than they used to playing in the preseason or the regular season. But I thought for their role, they understood what they were asking them to do, did a good job of doing it. Obviously, when you get Jacoby back, that's a good boost, boost for our offense. Really excited about that. And then, obviously, the roles for those other gentlemen will be accordingly. I mean, you, you talk about filling roles, but is there, like, do you want to see somebody kind of step up and take that next step and, and try to fill that? And, and obviously, you have been missing Jacoby, Jamarcus is gone. Like, right. somebody just kind of take the, take the reins? Yeah, I mean, you love to see it, but it's always on the players. I mean, the opportunities are there. It's not a lack of, right? So there's plenty of opportunities either on special teams. Hell, let's be honest, it starts right here in practice. Make the most of the opportunities there. You can be a practice squad player and get moved up. So, but when you do get opportunities in a game, you got to make the most of them. You gotta be productive, and more importantly, you gotta do your job, right? You gotta do exactly what we're asking you to do so the coaches trust you to give you the next rep. I know he just got here, but is there a scenario that you can see one way or the other where Desmond Ritter might be on the field on Sunday? If he's that quick in the playbook, I'll be positive, but as of right now, we'll go with Gardner. Do you expect Desmond to be the number two guy this week, though? Yes. I okay, know what happened last year uh, has no bearing on, on, on this season, but Andy Reid has said that he texted you. <laughs> Uh, to, to kind of say thanks for the wake up. Did that, did that actually uh, happen? Did you? Yeah, text, call, him, Spags, a couple players. I mean, it, was, it was real right after the game and in the Super Bowl. Uh, obviously, I'm familiar with a lot of the play, coaches on that staff. So, um, yeah, it didn't happen. And it was short and sweet. It was a long conversation. He was celebrating. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to get to. But obviously, uh, I'm glad that we woke him up. That's not what we wanted. We was worried about winning the game just like we are this week. But again, you know, just the amount of respect that we have for that organization, what they're able to do. Consistently, week in, week out. Obviously, you know, Andy, I played against him. Now, coaching against him, uh, he knows how to get his guys ready to play. Hey, P, because you've played so long at a high level as a player, how important against a Patrick Mahomes is being gap discipline for your defensive line? Yeah, let's go back to week two. Like Lamar Jackson, cage rush, got to keep him in the pocket. Look where all the explosive plays come. Look where all the Patrick magic happens, right? It's when that play extends. I saw a stat the other day on television, you know, Third down, he's holding the ball close to four seconds. It's a long time to cover. That's a long time to rush. So we really don't want that. We got to do a good job. The longer that he has the ball in his hand, the worse that is for us, obviously. But we got to do a good job of containing him. He likes to step up. They go lateral. And then this year, he's been doing a really good job running and getting extra yards. AP, over the summer, you said that you were going to implement the Jordan rules for Patrick Mahomes. Do you still plan on doing that? If so, how do you plan on doing that? I said that when? I <laughs> <laughs> believe in the past. 2024, baby. I believe in the past. I don't know if you were watching uh, the game last night, uh, but there was a, a, a missed face mask call that you know uh, could have obviously been a, a, a big play had it been called. Um, as a coach, where do you kind of fall on should that be something that's reviewable? And, and if so, where does, where does it start? Where does it end? What else could be reviewable? But, yeah, I think that's where, you, where you're going, right? Where does it start? Where does yeah. it end? Because that leads to other penalties and other fouls that you said, okay, we're going to review everything. And really in the league, what do they want to do? They want to speed the game up anyway. Shockingly, they don't really ever miss a face mask on a quarterback. So um, can't really speak on other teams, but that's just something I think, obviously, we into the offseason is going to be a topic. Going back to Patrick real quick and him running, uh, last week he had a play where he ran, looked like he was going out of bounds, but then yeah. kept moving. What's the fine line in – not allowing that to happen, and then also not getting a 15-yard penalty. For yeah, if his feet's on the green, he's locked. Yeah. Say it again, if his feet's <laughs> in the green, he's locked. He touched the white, leave him alone. So we talked about that this week. I mean, we've had a lot of examples, too, over the last uh, four games since I've been here against Patrick of having those close to late shoves on him. Haven't been called for him, uh, but we got respected. Obviously, we look at the officials every week. If that's something high on their list, we'll be smart as well. But. I mean, Patrick, like I said, I mean, he's made some plays on the sideline. You say, okay, man, like, he's not really easing up. You know, he's diving for first downs. He's running guys over. So, he, I mean, he's put his big boy pads on this year. And, you know, obviously, he's really healthy right now and running well. And you, you say honor it, but at the same time, you are honoring it sometimes, not just you, but other defensive uh, teams. 
and the next thing you know, you're 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 trying to honor the rule, and he's running, or some other quarterback is running for another 15 yards. So, how frustrating can that be when you're trying to play within the rules, but it costs you actually? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I, I told him players an opportunity or example with me and Michael Vick. He did the same thing where he was running to the sideline, and he all of a sudden he dove and he got a first down and a touchdown twice. Third time he wasn't lucky. I got to him, right? And it cost us, cost me in my pockets too. But um, I think that's just where we got to be smart, understanding who we're dealing with. Again, there's enough examples of him not running out of bounds. So again, if he got you know ten toes in the green, he's live. Is it almost worth taking a penalty sometimes if he's no. just going to? You no. Know? No. Fifteen yards only equal to a touchdown or points for against the Raiders. So you got to be smart. At the end of the day, I never. We try to educate our players, and at the end of the day, they got to make that judgment and split seconds of what to do. And like I said, we're just looking at really the green, right? If his 10 toes are down the green, those cleats are in the green, he's live. He is the white or he's almost out towards the white. We got to pull off and be smart. If Harrison Bryant uh, ends up limited and unable to go Sunday, uh, what have you seen from John Samuel Shanker? Is there anybody else in that tight end room that's impressed you out of practice recently? Yeah, I think Shanker, last last couple weeks we've had up, but really Justin Shorter has had an outstanding, since we, since we brought him in, I mean, that transition from wide receiver to tight end, He's bulked up, kind of energized the buddy first on practice, on uh, look teams, on special teams. Last week we elevated him. Uh, we'll see how it goes this week, but you know, if something goes on with Harris, I can see that happen as well. You talked about Desmond a minute ago. Um, just what have you seen in the first couple of days of practice, just him incorporating into the team, just on the practice field, that sort of thing? I think just being himself. I don't think he's trying to press, and we're not asking him to press and you know, go in and be the starting quarterback and help us turn this thing around. He's just a part of the puzzle for us, and I think he's doing a good job in the room. He has a good segment and presence about himself, very confident player, sharp, and to be honest, he's working his tail off to try to learn the playbook as fast as he can. When you're we're going in a game like this, we talked about you know, all the back and forth between the teams and everything else. Like, How do you balance telling the team this is important, it's a big game, but it's also just like another game? I mean, like, how do you it's not that? another game. Okay. It's a rivalry game. It's a team in red. It's been a few weeks in a row now where Teron Merrick has been able to Make some instinctive yeah. plays on the line of scrimmage and like show his pursuit of the ball. Right. What have you liked from him recently and what areas do you think we can continue to grow? Yeah, I think for seven games down the road, he's been very steady, consistent, making plays when it's there, close to the line of scrimmage, playing in the backfield. I don't know what he got, three or four TFLs. More importantly, physical, really physical. I think since we lost Marcus Epps, he's now become that more vocal player in the back end for us. Doing a really good job with Isaiah Palomao as well. So. When you just look at Trayvon in year four, and I always talk about this, you never know when it's going to click for a player. And for seven games, Trayvon's been clicking on all cylinders. You mentioned this is a rivalry. You've been a part of a lot of rivalries uh, over your career. Is there something, is, is, is bulletin board material a real thing? Is no. Any of that, like them having, have you, using your locker room during the Super Bowl, you guys winning in Kansas City, is there anything? No, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is still like, a, I go back to rivalries like this. To be a rivalry, it's got to be even. It's been one way, and we were fortunate to win that game last year by the way we played, and you know, guys having full out effort for 60 minutes, and you know, playing the style of football that we wanted to play. But it, like, you know, when you look at the history of this game, and over the last 10 years, it's been dominated by the by the Chiefs. And just like I did last year, and like I've been telling the team all week, you know, this is a team that's on 12 game winning streak. They're back to back defending champions. They dominate the division, and until you know, we go out there and do it consistently. You know, you got to answer those questions. I think we just got to go out there and play our style of football. We got to play a Raider brand of football. And if we can do that, I think we give ourselves a chance. I know you can't count on turnovers. You want to get them, but you can't count on them. But when your team hasn't been able to get too many of them, frustrating is that, is that kind of a point of emphasis? How, how do you try to start generating some of those? Yeah, I think it always happens in bunches. And I'll be honest, even when I took over, we, we weren't doing that at, at that time, right? We wasn't getting no turnovers. Then we go into a couple games, get five, get three, get two. They come in bunches, right? So last week, great job with the tip ball. Nate, wish we could have scored there. Uh, we talked about, you know, tackling. So you, you, you didn't see the guys punching as much. But now you got to start putting that all together, right? We're doing a better job the last couple of weeks of tackling. If you got the opportunity to punch the ball, you do it. If you got an opportunity to make a play on the ball, you do it. And that's what we're always encouraging. Sometimes when you just watch film, they're just, they're just not there. And sometimes you just gotta go hunt for it, right? If you really want to go get the ball, you go get the damn ball, right? If you want something like, if I want your water bottle, I'm gonna take your water bottle. And you might have a problem with that. And then that's where football comes into, right? So, like we talk to our guys, man, sometimes you know you can talk about it, otherwise, other times you just gonna go do it. And hopefully we can do it.
Coach, uh, to that point, does it feel like Ja'Cory and Bennett is bound to get uh, uh, some interceptions and turnovers because you know he's, he's up there in past deflections and getting pretty close? Yeah, he's been really close. And I think more importantly, like I always tell them, when we're in man coverage, just make sure your guy doesn't catch the ball. The cherry on top is you coming away with the football. And you really don't want to put that pressure on a corner because you will see them make those chances or those – I always call you make an educated guess or you make an uneducated guess. And we don't want to do that, right? We want to be smart with that. When the opportunity is there, just go ahead and make the most of it. He really hasn't had an opportunity to make an interception type play, but he's been in the right position a lot. And at some point, it's going to come in his hands, and I'll be happy for him to get his first career interception. You talked about since you got the job about culture, changing the culture. And you're disappointed at 2-5, and five, so is every guy in that locker room. But they're not pointing fingers, AP. What does that say about building the culture you want to build? Yeah, just like I told you on, on Monday, right? These guys all show up to work, like myself and the staff. And we know it's a long season. And there's a lot of football teams that are undefeated. They're losing games. Teams that are losing games, winning games. And we just got to get back on track. We got to get back on We've been close, but obviously close is not good enough. We got to stop beating ourselves. Bottom line, it's penalties, turnovers. If those things don't happen, we're talking about a different team right now. So when we make up our mind, as a staff and as players, that the ball is the most important thing to us, we'll be a winning football team and we'll win games. But the culture is already set. Those guys in the locker room understand it. They block out the house so it knows noise. Yeah, do they hear, do they read about it? You can't hide from it. So, but just use that as fuel. And that's what we do. We use it as fuel for this week against a very good football team. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, AP.